Sure, thank you. Well, bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. Ladies and gentlemen, show of hands, how many are actually in the room this morning? It's not a dumb question. Is it a great moment to be a Canadian these days? Is that not after the Olympics, isn't it? Awesome. Vancouver's just coming down off it. They're all antidepressants have gone up through the roof, so it's, uh, uh, we know what that looks like. You know, I have a chance to talk to professionals most days of the week and through different sides of the, the border. And the one thing I've learned, unless you have something in common with your audience, some of you are going to fold your arms and go, what the heck do you know about our business, and are we just wasting our time here for the next 20, 25 minutes or so? So I've learned that if we have something in common, we can build a relationship. Would you agree with that? Is it true the people you serve, the people you work with? The more you have in common with them, the better the relationship. So I have devised a number of questions that if you'll answer honestly will help determine whether we have some common ground all in the hopes of building a relationship but you be honest with your responses show of hands how many of you ever get depressed well good we have that in common how many of you ever get uh, frustrated with your lives lives not wives lives you work with me over there okay good how many of you have a significant other a spouse a partner a dog cat that's usually hand in hand with the frustration question so your congruent group here's the last question it's a trick question how many of you have too much month at the end of the money? Uh, I think we have something in common. Let me tell you what I'm not. You need to know I'm not an expert at what you do. I don't do what you do. I know, understand all the brands that are here. I understand a lot of the companies that are here. It's good to see some old friends, some clients, people we've worked with over the years, over the last decade here in Canada. So it's great to see you again and for those that we work with. So we've got some wonderful brands here, wonderful companies, but I'm not a guru at what you do. So I can't come and tell you, here's how you do things better. So why am I here? Well, I'm here because I represent your marketplace. My company, Summit Learning Systems, we interview your customers right across the country, both sides of the border, and we ask them what makes them choose. So in a competitive environment, what makes them pick this company versus that company? And we all have choice today in Canada. And how do you stack that deck, and how do you build the relationship so that they choose you as the preferred provider of what you sell? So let's get started into it. And we started off in French. By the way, we do have all of our materials in both languages, and we're translating into Spanish now as we speak. And so when we conduct our presentations, we understand the needs of our Quebec friends. Any Quebec friends here? Raise your hands. Anybody? I was born in saint jean sur les richelieu so we usually, I was speaking in Quebec City yesterday, so we, we, we do have some good things for you. And are you okay over there by yourself, or you want to come in? You're, you're good? All right, good. All right, let's begin this way. You all represent some great brands. Again, we know who's there. Brand's important. Brand gets you to the table. Brand helps to build the trust in our country today. But it's gone beyond brand. It's elevated to what we call brand experience. And here's what I mean by that. Starbucks. Any Starbucks snobs here? Raise your hands. Anyone like Starbucks? Yeah. I was finding them first thing this morning, 7 o'clock. I was Google, place where I got to go. I remember when Saskatchewan was the last province to get Starbucks. And thank goodness, you know how some people go to hotels and they steal uh, soap or towels? I steal the Starbucks packages. So I always stash up, make sure I never want to be without. I'll get to the elevator if there's a shopping, one of the service carts there and she's in servicing a room. You know, I'll shut the door, take the whole box and make a dash for it. So I'm never Never without my little stash of Starbucks. Now, do they really make great coffee? I could argue, you could argue it's maybe a little bit over roasted. So why do we go to Starbucks? Why do we line up? Starbucks brand experience, it's not about their coffee. They created what we call the third place. Home, office, Starbucks. I don't want to go home. I don't want to go to the office. Let's meet at Starbucks. It's the meeting place. And in Canada, you're either a Tim's person or you're a Starbucks person, but it doesn't really matter. But that's what the brand experience is all about. How Starbucks did it is they employ all five senses in their offering. Sight, sound, smell, taste, feel. Walk into a Starbucks, what's it look like? Lighting look good? Looks like this, incandescent. It sounds good. One of the fastest growing businesses in the music industry. It smells good whether you drink coffee or not. Tastes good and it feels good. And people line up and pay four fifty for a mochiato. So the moral of the story is go back to your businesses, offices, retail spot, doesn't matter what, and do a sensory audit. And how are you employing all five senses? Companies that employ all five senses in their offering get premium dollars in the marketplace. They just do. Customers don't know why they feel good. They just feel good. Harley Davidson. Their logo is what we call a love mark. People love this one so much they will tattoo it to their body. Who, who has one? What if your company was a love mark? Would you wear their tattoo? Imagine if it was that good. Well, Harley is not about them. Do they really make good motorcycles? Any Harley folks? If they made airplanes, would you fly on it? No. So Harley is not about the motorcycle. Their brand experience is what we call, they created what we call rebel lifestyle. Create an opportunity for a middle-aged Canadian to dress up in leathers, ride through small towns, and have people be afraid of him. 
and we paid 30000 for the privilege. So here's the question we need to ask. What's our brand experience? Because you have one whether you like it or not. We design great products. We make phenomenal services. We bring them to the marketplace. But you have an experience. Are you creating that experience? How are you creating that experience? And that all begins with a relationship. Would you agree? So we have a formula for that too. And we start with the relationship formula. What's the foundation of all relationships? What are we going to have first? Trust. Would you agree with that? Can we have a relationship without trust? Well, you can, but you'll always lose to one where trust exists. So on this side of the equation, we have what we call high task. That's your core competency. This is what you do well. It's the products that you make. It's the services. And at this point in the program, I usually walk into the audience and I start interviewing people. But because we're filming, I won't. But we we interview them and I ask them, why should I pick you? Why should I choose you? And we get things. Well, we listen to our customers and we create great products. And they give me all these great high task reasons of why why we should do business with them. And we get, that's what we call high task. It's driven by the company, the organization. Why is your company in business? Make money. I hope that's not a surprise to some of you. Anyone here doing it for the love of humanity? It's sort of your way of giving back. All right, good. We got the right group. So high task is your core competency. It's all the stuff you produce. It's how you deliver what you deliver. It's driven by the organization. High touch, by the way, it's the logic side of the purchasing equation. We know people buy first with emotion. Justify with logic, second. But the question is, how are we selling? How are we servicing? They do the homework with their head, but they pull the trigger with their heart. And are we pulling those emotional triggers? So that's the high task side. On the high touch side, I say, what do you do to exceed expectations? This is where I get blank stares. And they're like, well, we listen to our customers. I go, shouldn't we be listening? Well, we deliver. We do what we say we're going to do. Well, shouldn't we do that? So in the interest of time, let me share with you some stories of what I think high touch is all about. But before I do that, let me give you an example. Give me three nationally branded companies, three that everybody knows has amazing service. Yell them out. Yell them out. Go ahead. Airline industry who? Yeah, we get WestJet, we get JetBlue, we get Disney, we get Nordstrom's, we get FedEx, we get Four Seasons, we get Starbucks, we get all kinds. We get Dell, we get Lexus. Next question, do you ever ask those companies for a discount? Do you ever ask them for a discount? Nor will you get one. So what we have to do in our companies and organizations is we got to look at the best of breed. Who's the best of breed? We just named a few. Here's us, whoever we happen to be, and we have a gap. And your job is to close that gap. Now, the bad news is you probably won't close the gap. Those companies will probably stay ahead of you. But if you focus on closing the gap, guess who you'll stay miles ahead of? Your competition, your competitors, because they're looking at you. Pull your heads up out of your business. Don't look in your business for excellence. Look outside your business for excellence, and then try and up-level that within your own organization. So let me share with you some stories, what I think is high touch and what it's all about. Now, don't worry about these stories. People come up to me after a seminar and go, We can't do those stories. Well, I know. These are my stories. You guys get your own stories. I want you to see the moral of the story.